keep going. All right, we'll go on to item number 10. Thank you very much. I item 10, stage three drought update. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, I'm Rebecca Bjork, I am pinch hitting today. Uh, let me just get the presentation up. Thank you. Um, while that's happening, I just want to comment that this is our last drought update of 2017. And I'd like to take this chance to thank council member White for his very diligent and long service to the Kachuma Operations Maintenance Board, the Kachuma Conservation Resource Board, the Central Coast Water Authority, and the Water Commission. His input and guidance and support has been very important in this really critical time for water, water supply management and water infrastructure. So thank you, Council Member White. We really greatly appreciate your service. Uh, so with that, we are going to go over the drought status, the demand status, water supply strategy, the water supply status, and water conservation program. So as we are all too well aware, we are still in a drought. Um, we are part of a small part of California that remains in a moderate drought. However, this California drought moderate monitor map is really big focus rather than small focus and our water supply situation remains very bad in terms of local water supplies. Whereas we got a good amount of water into Kachuma last year, we're far from out of um, the weeds in terms of the reeds in terms of the getting the um, back to a good situation with drought. And certainly when you look around at our landscape and um, unfortunately today, as we're all too well aware at the natural landscape, all of our plants and the environment are really suffering from this prolonged period of no rainfall. Looking at the next three month window from NOAA in terms of what we're expecting for a water supply year, they're projecting a 30% chance of drier than average. Uh, not really what we want to hear, but we're optimistic that maybe drier than average will still be good enough and we get a couple good rainstorms, it might make a real difference for us. Uh, on the good news side, our community continues to excel in their conservation efforts. And we are, saw a 35% reduction for the month of October and are at a 40% 12 month running average which was council's goal as of the summer with last year's, I mean, as of last year with last year's rains, we did relax that to 30%. But this continued conservation on the part of our public is really much appreciated and doing an excellent job in helping us have the tools in our toolbox to continue to respond to this drought situation. Uh, as you can see, we are now at our lowest point ever in water demand, at least since 1985, surpassing where we were in the 1992 drought. Uh, I want to point out that this is despite having about 5,000 more residents in the city and an increased level of tourism and visitor visitors. So not only our residents, but our visitors, residents, but our visitors and our businesses are doing a terrific job in making every drop count. This is a new chart for you. Um, this is the first time we're in a new water year. We, the water year started October 1st, and this is our first drought presentation since then. Um, and so happy new year. Uh, you can see that we're now in year seven of the drought. This is unprecedented. It's been seven years since Kachuma last spilled. What you're looking at there is our water supply plan for how we expect to meet water demands, assuming a 30% conservation. Um, you can see that in 2020, we are again looking at a shortfall. We will continue to update this as we go along. That gives us two winters to hopefully get some rain, but we would expect to fill that gap with either additional purchased water, um, additional groundwater, um, you know, looking at our, our supply matrix and seeing where we need to go and possibly adjusting conservation levels uh, back down to the 35 or 40% that we had earlier in this drought. So that continues to be an adaptive management strategy in managing the water supplies. With regard to water supply strat status, uh, Gibraltar Reservoir is at a 
1,800 acre feet approximately, 33% of capacity. It did stop spilling in early May. We have been maximizing diversions from Gibraltar. The water quality is remaining good, which is great. We're planning to maintain about 1,500 acre feet of water in that reservoir through the winter. There are two components to that. The first is the bottom 500 acre feet generally become very difficult to treat in terms of water quality. But we also are concerned after the Whittier fire for water quality in Kachuma, and we may need to be diverting from Gibraltar in, in preference to Kachuma. So we're trying to make sure that we have water there to continue to bring water in through, through, that, um, through the tunnel. Um, speaking to Kachuma, it's at 39% of capacity. Uh, we have just received from the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation a 40% allocation for water year 2018. That's the same as we received last year. There was a, a downstream water rights release going on. I believe they released about 10,000 acre feet of water with a goal of getting 4,000 down to the Lompoc Plain. Uh, but during that time that that water was being released, we were not making fish releases. Now that that has stopped, we are again making releases for habitat. It's about 150 acre feet per month. And as I mentioned, we are working to be ready for the Whittier fire so that we can be responsive and manage it should we have um, rain that puts sediment into the reservoir that could potentially make it difficult to treat or raise uh, or, or organic carbon levels. We would we have some strategies that we're perfecting, including the use of Gibraltar water. Uh, this chart shows the it's it's actually from September 30, so it doesn't show the new water year, but um, it shows the allocations of water in Kachuma. And you can see that we still have 3,000 acre feet of 2017 water. As I said, we got 40% allocation in 2018, so it's another 3,011 acre three feet. And we have about 2,000 acre feet of uh, imported water or cent uh, state water also stored in Kachuma at this point in time. And the other bars show how we are planning jointly to manage the rest of the water in the reservoir to meet the needs of evaporation, fish passage, uh, fish releases, should we want to augment supplies because we have extra water in the, in the ecosystem that we want to be able to support, um, and then the downstream accounts and the minimum pool. So for wa imported water, which has really continued to play a very, very important role in the city's response to this drought, as I said, we have about 2,000 acre feet of water currently in Kachuma. We have 1,400 acre feet at San Luis Reservoir. We have a 500 acre feet approximately in the initial allocation for 2018. That just came out from the Department of Water Resources. They have not had much rain or snow in the north yet. And this is very typical. They usually come out with a conservative first allocation. And then as they get a better sense for how the water year is going to develop, they will increase that, that um, estimate. They really don't like to decrease the estimate. But this is substantially better than it was a few years ago when we got a zero. Mr. White had a question. Uh, uh, comment, actually. Uh, could you back up to the previous slide? It, it's, a, uh, it's just, uh, to me, it, it always is amazing how little of the water that's in, this is sort of as a, uh, a, a graph of what's, what's in Kachuma, and how much of it is ours is so little. Uh, we're, project water is that first uh, dark green color there. And when you just look at all those other colors, those are the ones that have, have the water. There's the in-stream rights, and there are the fish rights. And then there's the county has its uh, minimum pool down there at the bottom, which uh, is a, uh, an ongoing conversation, whether it's allocated to uh, the, the county or not. So just, just how, yes, Kachuma is at 39% of, of capacity, but uh, our share is a pretty darn small amount. It's the, the, what, less than, less than 10,000 acre feet there. So um, going forward, just keep an eye on this chart and how others get a whole lot of the water when it rains, others get a whole lot of the water before we start getting any. Thank you. So um, just to pick up on imported water, thank you, Council Member White. The, um, we, we did have quite a bit of state water in San Luis uh, this year, 
And so we have used some of that water to return it to a AVEC, which is an Antelope Valley, Eastern Kern, I believe, uh, who we had done an unequal exchange slash sale purchase from. Um, and we owe them, and continue to owe them about a 3,300 acre feet. We had, we had some concerns about being able to get this water delivered without it being at risk of spilling. So um, it was a good and opportune time for us to repay them with water that was relatively inexpensive. We are continuing to maximize delivery to Kachuma. The current average pipeline capacity for the city is 280 acre feet per month. However, the pipeline was down in November for maintenance. So we will either, we have, as I said, quite a bit of water in storage in San Luis. And if we do not get enough allocation for to keep the pipeline full, we will be looking to purchase that water to make sure we keep the pipeline full and can maximize deliveries from Northern California. Groundwater basins were currently turned off, and if you, I, I did not point it out, but the 2018 plan does not show any use of groundwater. We want to store that, and can you continue to store that? That's a safe, secure source of groundwater, of water supply. It's also something that if we need to, we can turn on if water quality in Kachuma uh, declines. We can augment Gibraltar with groundwater wells, um, and they are being exercised frequently to keep that available. Desalination plant, the acceptance testing has been completed, but we're still working with IDE on a number of punch list items and other items, and we are also hoping to do a public tour sometime next year. Um, and we still have not heard about the, the grant funding. They had told us October, November, and now it's December, but we are still crossing our fingers because that would be a great help. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Ward to talk about our water conservation. Madam Mayor, members of the council, my name is Madeline Ward. I'm the Water Conservation Supervisor. I wanted to start today reminding everyone that power outages also can impact water usage because sprinkler timers, if they don't have a backup battery, they'll go on default and they'll forget all of your programs. Some timers don't do that, but we see quite a few in the field that do have that. So I do remind you that as you're resetting all your clocks from all of this power outages to also take a look at your sprinkler timers. So today I wanted to talk about the GardenWise TV show. This is our long running garden show about sustainable landscaping. It began in 2006. So far we've created 33 episodes. It's produced by Santa Barbara City TV and Water Resources, along with the County Water Agency and Goleta Water District. So our newest episode that is airing and started airing in November is called Take Your Landscape to the Next Level with Trees. <clears throat> Some of the segments that are highlighted are the new WaterWise home garden at the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden, where you can get inspiration on native plantings. We also show viewers how to effectively water trees during a drought with Kathy Perret, the City Water Resources Specialist, and to how effectively prune trees with Oscar Carmona of the Green Gardener Program. We have a design segment with Billy Goodnick. He's showing homeowners how to create a functional backyard space that also saves water. And Randy Baldwin of San Marcos Growers talks about the history and functionality of dragon trees in Santa Barbara. You can see a great specimen right there on the screen, and that is in Alameda Park. So the current and past episodes can be viewed on our website. They're also on our YouTube channel, and they're also on Cox Channel 18, Cox Channel 20, and Comcast Channel 23. And we're here for any questions. Great, thank you. I don't see any speaker slips this time around. Okay, um, I too want to uh, acknowledge Council Member White for keeping us um, not just uh, on the menu, but at the table when it comes to, to water issues. I mean, it, there were some pretty gnarly issues that I know you had to deal with and a lot of diplomacy and you handled it well on our behalf. So thank you very much. Um, and any other comments on water? So let it rain, right? For all, especially over Ventura right now too. So let's let that happen. Okay, thank you very much.